time in giving evidence today. Thank you, Chair. Uh, we Thank will you. now uh, move to Just Equal Australia and Equality Australia, and I welcome representatives from those groups. Thank you so much for taking time to give evidence today. Information about parliamentary privilege has been provided to you and is available from the Secretariat. The committee has received your submissions as submissions 28 and 29 respectively. Uh, please indicate whether you wish to make any corrections to your submission. And for the Hansard record, could you please each state your full name and the capacity in which you appear today? Uh, can I start with Just, e Just Equal Australia, please? Uh, good morning. This is Brian Gregg. I'm the West Australian representative of Just Equal Australia. Thank you, Mr Gregg. Mr Croom, we're not hearing you. Um, if you could just um, check that you're on, not on mute. Sorry, you'd think I'd realise by now. Thanks, Senator. Um, <laughs> uh, Rodney Croom, uh, the national, sp national spokesperson for Just Equal Australia. Thanks, Mr Croom. And to Equality Australia. Kassan Kassasia, Legal Director at Equality Australia. And um, we have two individuals appearing with us as well. I'm sure they yep. can introduce themselves. <laughs> I'm uh, Pastor Karen Pack, appearing in a personal capacity. And I'm Nathan Zampronio, also appearing in a personal capacity. Thank you. Uh, thank you all so much. We will, um, could I ask you to make, um, each to make a one minute statement if you wish, uh, which you will need to keep to one minute, please. Do you have an opening statement, Just Equal Australia? Uh, thank you, yes. Um, we've been told that the Religious Discrimination Bill simply protects people of faith from discrimination, but it doesn't. It allows increased discrimination in the name of faith against a range of groups, including LGBTIQ plus people. For example, the bill will override laws preventing um, uh, uh, bullying against LGBTIQ plus people, allow and encourage discrimination against LGBTIQ plus staff in faith-based schools and other services, and give the green light to anti-LGBTIQ plus conduct uh, from members of professional bodies, government contractors and street preachers. But that's only the start. This bill is an attempt to roll back the achievement of marriage equality by those who never accepted the yes vote. It gives special legal privileges to people who already have immense privilege so they can demean and discriminate against some of the most marginalised people in the community. It says an archbishop should be able to say things other people aren't allowed and that his umbrage at being held accountable matters more than the legal rights of people with disability. The bill entrenches a double standard of one rule for religious people and one rule for everyone else. Thank you. We will need to leave it there. Thank you so much for your statement. Now to Equality Australia. Thank you, Chair. Um, I would just like to begin by saying um, our position is our laws should protect all of us equally. And in its current form, the bill winds back protections, LGBTIQ plus people and others, and contains unprecedented provisions that undermine inclusive workplaces, education and service settings. And over 6,000 of our supporters have also signed the people's submission to that effect, and we're proud to submit it on their behalf. Um, as Legal Director, I'm very happy to answer questions about our position and uh, have experience, personal experience in discrimination law and policy, teach in public law and practice as a commercial litigator um, for many years before joining Equality Australia. But we think that the bills also failed to address a long-standing injustice, which has allowed LGBTQ teachers, students and staff to experience discrimination in religious educational institutions simply because of who they are or whom they love. And that's why I'm joined today by two individuals who we've um, yielded some of our time to so you can hear direct experience. Uh, thank that. you so much. I, I apologise, but we do need to stick strictly to one minute opening statements. I will now go to questions and I give the for call first to Senator Scar. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. And um, look, I, um, I was going to ask some um, questions about some particular matters. I can put them on notice. Um, if I could ask, um, uh, as, as a matter of courtesy, the two witnesses who have just been referred to today who have appeared to tell their story, um, if I could ask each of you if you could um, give your uh, uh, personal experiences with respect to these matters and, and your perspective. You first, Karen. 
Sure. Well, my name's Karen Pack, and I'm here because uh, I was a lecturer at a Christian Bible college here in Sydney, one of the major theological colleges in Sydney. Uh, I was employed in 2017 because I was asked to write some subjects for new postgraduate programs, uh, and then I was asked to become a lecturer in those subjects. Um, I, when I signed my contracts, I was very sure to, in, to make sure that I wasn't signing anything that I couldn't sign with integrity as a, as a gay Christian woman. Um, and I was offered a per permanent contract six months later in the middle of 2018. In the aftermath of the marriage equality uh, debate and the introduction of marriage equality legislation, the college uh, introduced a clarified community code or community covenant um, that made clearer that the college's stance on same-sex relationships. And so shortly after that, when I was asked to sign another uh, contract for another permanent role at the college, um, I was specified to the leadership of the college, the person with whom I was signing the contract, that I am gay, that I am in a relationship. Um, and that was uh, the person responded to me, that's no problem with for me. How do you feel about the community code? Now, I explained that I accept that, um, you know, the Bible teaches that marriage is between a man and a woman and that I think that's a beautiful and a sacred thing, but that is not the limits of what I believe as a Christian and that I believe in marriage equality. Um, at the end of 2019, I became engaged to my same-sex partner uh, and the college and myself started to receive phone calls and emails uh, denouncing me as demonic, my relationship as demonic. Um, and so in March of 2020, I was called into meetings with the principal um, where I was asked what my response to that was, would be. Um, I said, nothing has changed for me. What, what's your response given the harassment that I'm experiencing? Uh, two weeks later, I was informed that I no longer had a job at the college, that on the 8th of April 2020 would be my last day lecturing, and the next day a letter was sent out to all staff at the college informing them that the principal, with the support of the board, had determined that I could no longer work at the college because um, of my same-sex relationship with Bronte. And that document also praised the depth of my Christian faith and my excellence as a teacher and my impact on the college. So it was very clear that the problem wasn't my teaching, my theology or my character. It was purely because uh, I'm gay and was getting married to my partner, Bronte. Ms. Pack, can I, can I ask you, from your perspective, one of, one of the um, recommendations coming out of the Ruddock review, uh, and, and the principles are uh, reflected in the bill, there's this concept that if a, if a religious institution, a school or a college is to have a policy which would have an impact on, on, on particular people, well, that, that policy should be made public. It should be made up front so that people such as yourself, and I was interested in your evidence that um, you considered um, the, the whatever the documents were prior to in get, taking employment with the with the college to make sure you could sincerely and yeah. with integrity agree to those comments. Do you think there's um, if, if 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 the situation had changed such that there was a clear articulation um, mm -hmm. as to what the beliefs and expectations were before you were employed, as opposed mm -hmm. to you being employed sincerely believing you met the beliefs but then subsequently finding that the ground had shifted under your feet. Do you think mm -hmm. there's a difference in that situation from your perspective and how we should consider that as legislators? Yeah, I think that I think the challenge to that is the reason why religious institutions such as the one that employed me uh, are seeking to have those public statements. Uh, and in fact, in October of 2018, when I was working at the college, uh, the principal circulated an email to all the staff explaining that because of uh, marriage equality legislation, the college had taken legal advice to ensure that they would be able to continue to discriminate against um, LGBTIQ plus students and that that was the specific reason for the publication of the community code. I think what's often misunderstood in this debate uh, and a mistruth that I often hear spoken is people who say, you're gay, why are you trying to work at a Christian institution? as if LGBTIQ plus people are trying to insinuate ourselves in community. That's not the case. I am a, I'm a person of faith. I've been an ordained minister for 12 years. My parents were ordained ministers for over 50 years. My wife, Bronte, her parents are ordained ministers. Like I have a sincerely held Christian faith. I'm not trying to insinuate myself into anything. I am within my community of faith as a gay, as a gay woman. Um, 
But what is happening at the moment with this legislation and others is an attempt essentially to purge the church of, of people like myself. Senator Scar, um, I'm sorry to cut in here, but we are running to a very tight time frame. Are you able to put your other questions on notice? Uh, no, I am. But uh, thank you for joining us, Ms Pack. I'll now give the call to Senator Bragg. Oh, thanks, Chair. Um, uh, I just wanted to thank you very much for making your time available today. Um, are we able to hear from uh, Councillor Zamprogno? Yes. Thank you, Senator, and thank you, members of the committee. Um, I'm here this morning to testify that Christian schools can and do sack teachers because of their sexuality. I was one. Karen and I represent just two examples of very many of this phenomenon. I have to say I don't relish being here because what I need to relate is a source of trauma for me. But the goading of friends and the pricking of my conscience means that I can't not speak out. I worked in a variety of private Christian K-12 schools uh, in the Sydney area for 20 years. They tended to be non-denominational Protestant schools who share a banner like Christian Schools Australia, and I note that you took testimony from Mark Spencer from that peak body yesterday. Schools that are typical of thousands of such schools across Australia. Now, I have to tell you that over the years, I have seen other staff sacked because of their uh, sexuality. In my own case, at the school that I worked at, the headmaster would casually say in a staff meeting, oh, well, I wouldn't employ a gay teacher. And I would shrink into the corner and a part of me would die inside. The chief PDHPE teacher would say, in the context of teaching on these significant mental health issues, that sexual preference was a choice and you could choose yourself into it and you could choose yourself out of it. The board president of the school pamphleted the entire staff and parent community with unkind articles at the peak of the debate about same-sex marriage and made it clear not only that the school's position was that marriage should only be between a man and a woman, but that there was little latitude for others to hold a different view even as a private matter. Now, I've seen firsthand the significant effects on mental health that these issues um, bring to uh, students. It's significant that at the school that I taught at, two thirds of the school body, the student body, came from unchurched families, people who were not part of the religious community, but were simply sending their kids to a good local private school, and that 71% of their funding came from government sources. In my case, when I was challenged about my sexuality, I answered honestly, and then I was told that there was no place for me at the school in the following year. The connection was crystal clear. The testimony that you have received from others that this is not the case is simply not true. I was well regarded in that community amongst my students and my peers, and I was good at what I did. I never dishonoured my employer, and I regarded my private life as just that. My sexuality had, no, had nothing to do with my ability to do my job. As a member of the Liberal Party for nearly 30 years, I implore you either to abandon this bill or at least to fix the egregious loopholes that are going to permit discrimination against people like Karen and myself. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor. Can I um, thank you both for uh, presenting your uh, difficult personal stories today? Um, I just wanted to, uh, for the avoidance of doubt and conscious of time, just get on the record um, whether or not in both of your cases uh, you ever taught against the theology or ethos of the school. Uh, I'll, I'll fill that. And the answer is clearly no. You know, my ability to teach technology, which was my uh, key subject area, that and English, had nothing to do with my own views. I was not a flag waver. I am a member of the Liberal Party and an elected local government representative. I think of myself as an upright citizen in my community. I never did anything to dishonour my employer, and yet this was grounds to exclude me from a sector that I'd worked in for 20 years. Karen? Uh, no, very much not. In fact, knowing that I am a gay woman, my faculty asked me to teach a core subject in biblical and theological foundations and ethics for um, counsellors and spiritual carers. So I was actually asked to teach theology and ethics because of my integrity and my faith. 
and I never under, undermined the college's position at all, even when I was asked directly about um, same-sex relationships and LGBTIQ issues. I explained the position of the college and that there's a spectrum of opinion within Christianity, but I certainly never undermined um, the views of the college. Okay, just final question, that's okay. Yes. Um, thank you. Um, do you think that there are other teachers who have been in your situation uh, who are unprepared for various understandable reasons to come forward and tell their stories? Yes, may I, may I respond to that? Yes. In the time since I have come out publicly and particularly since my um, story was aired somewhat in the media, I've been approached by literally hundreds of teachers and students from Christian schools and Christian uh, religious institutions explaining to me either the trauma that they have faced as gay people who feel, or LGBTIQ people who feel forced to remain closeted in a very don't ask, don't tell environment. They've explained to me the trauma that they've faced psychologically and emotionally, the mental health challenges that they've faced. I've also had many of them, dozens of them tell me uh, about how they have been excluded from their school communities or fired from their jobs because of their gender identity or sexuality. Um, as well as others who have been dismissed because they got divorced or because they became single parents uh, or for a variety of reasons. So, Senator, permit me to concur. I agree with Karen that there are very many people and part of the difficulty is that employers will often obfuscate the reason that they're letting an employee go, even when it is clear that it is because of either their religious conviction uh, or their sexuality. And my most important point is this. The provisions of this bill effectively empower those who want to put pressure on and ultimately purge people of a different religious conviction to themselves within religious communities. And worse, this bill um, would side in those debates with those who are less ecumenical, less moderate, less compassionate. And I don't think that the parliament should be weighing in and taking sides in what are, in many cases, doctrinal differences of opinion within faith communities. And if I, if I can add to that uh, as well, so you asked about yes, the harm very being briefly, done. Yes, very briefly, Ms Pack. Sure. I just want to comment that we know from numerous studies throughout the world that um, people who are forced to remain closeted or feel that they need to remain closeted within their communities because of a fear of ostracism from their community, that has incredible mental health impacts. That has impacts on high rates of suicidal ideation and homelessness and mental distress. Um, and so to Senator Bragg's question, there are many people that continue to be closeted or hiding parts of themselves that are suffering incredible mental health damage. And I actually think that that should be a great concern of our, of our government and parliament, the ongoing harm that has been done by forcing people to remain closeted because of the harm, the detriment that they experience if they come out. And we should be concerned for the many, many queer young people of faith who are watching things like this play out and know what will happen to them if they are to come out because they see what's happened to me, to Nathan, to Steph Lance, to David, to Elise, to so many people that I could name. They're watching, they see, and it is doing them harm. Um, Senator Bragg, thank you very much. I've just got a quick question, um, Ms Pack, before I hand over to Senator Rice. Um, Ms Pack, I just want to clarify that you were engaged by Morling College as an openly gay woman, so there was no issue with that? When I was engaged by, uh, when I was employed by Morling College, they approached me. Uh, there was not a question about my sexuality at that time. But, and, you, uh, but that, that was disclosed and known and there was no issue from the college. I just want to clarify that, that point. It was not asked when I was employed, but in my time at the college, I was out to everyone on my faculty, including my yeah. dean, my associate dean, okay, and members so there of the league. So does the school had no issue with you being an openly gay woman? It, <laughs> the people to whom I reported did not have an issue okay. with it. And then, so, so it, just based on your evidence, it, it appears the issue arose when you decided to um, become engaged and, and get married uh, under yep. our new laws, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. So is that the basis on which the, I guess, the trigger occurred, which I assume was in contravention of that school's particular doctrines and tenets in, in relation to their belief in traditional marriage? I'm not, I'm not making a judgment one way or the other. I'm just no. trying to understand on the evidence, uh, what yeah. was the trigger for your um, departure from the school? 
the particular trigger was an email that the college received from a member of the wider Baptist community saying, I've just discovered that Karen Pack is a lesbian. That is disgusting and sick. You need to publicly denounce her because she is demonic. Um, as I said, it was known to my friends and family that I was gay, but the trigger was it becoming more widely known in the evangelical community and then being reported to the principal and the board who I believe had not been aware of that. Even so was that before or after you announced your intention to get married? I'm just trying to understand the factual... Sorry, that that was that was after I announced my intention right. to, to get okay. married. Okay, thank, yep. thanks, Ms. Pack. I just wanted to clarify those matters. Yes, Senator thank Rice. Thanks. Thank you. Um, look, just some broader questions to Equality Australia to begin with. Um, your submission. Thank you very much for your submission and the case studies. There have been a number of other um, submitters who have said that stuff that you say in your submission is wrong. I presume that you have looked at that, <laughs> looked at those those claims. I just wanted to give you an opportunity to respond to the, the criticisms of your submission by some of the other submitters. I think the Institute for Civil Society, the Catholic Education Commission, there are a range of, of um, other um, submitters who have criticised the Equality Australia submission. Um, thank you, Senator Rice. Um, I, I'm a black letter lawyer, so I'm interested in looking at what the law says and how it's going to be construed by the courts in light of its purpose. So, and what we have done is used um, current law that we know, um, cases um, in ascertaining the words of particular provisions, like the good faith test in section 12, which I think um, people are um, treating as having some kind of, you know, miracle cure to what that provision does. Uh, which is to allow things that today would be unlawful discrimination to occur when people make a statement of belief. Um, and I'm happy to um, respond on notice if you prefer around you know, the, the detailed legal um, analysis around the good faith provision and that section.